Dear President Tusk, dear presidents and director general, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, excuse myself, I cannot stand because, as maybe you know, I had a ski accident, so I broke my leg, but as you see, I'm here. I cannot miss our birthday, our celebration, so sorry for that, but I'm really very happy to be here. It is my real great pleasure and honor for me to welcome you all in this fourth Business Europe Day. Uh, we are extremely pleased and honored that President Tusk uh, has kindly accepted to make the opening of uh, this, uh, uh, this day, because as I said, this is a really special Business Europe Day. This is our 60th anniversary, and uh, as Marcus said, we are really very uh, you're grateful to Donald, because we know today, as all your days are very busy, and you are going to meet Theresa May for a very important meeting. Thank you very much, Donald, to be with us. So exactly 60, thank you, Donald. And I also want to say that uh, our collaboration with Donald has always been very strong, and I'm sure we will continue to work very well in this difficult and challenging, and challenging time. So as, as Marcus said, exactly 60 years ago, so the same day, so the 1st of March, 1958, we had the very first meeting of our organization, and this meeting took place in, in Brussels. And I'm very, really proud and honored to be here today to celebrate the engagement, because this is what we, it is, the engagement of the business community for Europe with the presidents and director general of our funding members, but of course also with all the other members' federation who joined us since then. And also I'm very happy that we have some of our predecessors here with us uh, to celebrate and to, uh, to uh, discuss about the future. So today is a day where we look at our tradition, at our, at our roots, at our values, but of course we want also to look at our future and what we need to do for the next future. So Europe is our core business for 90, since 1958. Business Europe, as you know, is the oldest organization representing small, medium, and large companies from all sectors at European level. Business Europe is also the oldest EU social partner, and this is not a coincidence. We were created because the business community strongly supported the European project from the very beginning. In fact, the lady who became our first director general, as I said yesterday, she was a very tough and clever lady. We like, we like very much tough and very clever lady. Even participated in the negotiation of the treaties of Rome as a member of the Belgian delegation. So, uh, the, the, the life of Business Europe was from the very beginning linked uh, with uh, the life of, of, of Europe. And I'm very pleased that her deputy, Beatrice Verkuren, uh, who drafted our first statutes, is present today. You just heard her testimony in the video. The timeline you will find in the photo album you received as a souvenir of our 60th anniversary clearly show that we often set the pace for European integration. Just let me give some example. We called for an, an economic and monetary union already in 1973, and saw the start of the European monetary system in 1979. So we started before. Then we insisted on a genuine internal market uh, in 1984, and very much supported the single European Act uh, two years later. We joined the Valdusha social dialogue from the very beginning, beginning with SEP in the 1980s, and then with UACME. And together with ETUC, and we have uh, 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 my friend Vicentini here with us, uh, thank you very much for being with us, we shaped the articles on the role of the European social dialogue and strength in the treaty since 1992. And also, we always, from the very beginning, work to open market for free trade, which is one of our core mission, and we had very strong relationship also with member uh, with federation of industry from all other parts of the world. So, for example, U.S. Chamber of Commerce for the U.S., the Japanese Federation of Industry, the Russian Federation of Industry, the Canadian Federation of Industry, and this was very important to really open the market and uh, have a strong support for free trade. So, ladies and gentlemen, Europe is one of the best places in which to live, to work, and to do business in the world. 
and that this could not have been achieved without the European Union. This is what we believe strongly. The, Euro the, Euro the European economy is picking up. This is important. Last year, we even outgrew the US in terms of growth, but uh, there is still a lot to do. Unemployment is still too high. Many people have concern about their future, and we have to take this into account. And some even have doubts about the benefit that business can actively bring to society. So today, we want to have an in-depth discussion and debate on how to build a stronger and better Europe for the next generation. This is our mission, like our predecessor did 60 years ago. We have a key role to play in society, making sure that our model for social market economy continues to be strong. This is why we chose to focus Business Europe Day this year, 2018, on the values of dot S of the business. We want to talk about values. Values are important. Values are our roots. And under this slogan, we want to discuss the value of business for society, as well as, as well the values for European business. I want to underline, we all know, but sometimes it's good to remind this, entrepreneurs play a crucial role for society. We invest, we create jobs, we make the economy grow. We give individuals the possibility to earn a living, but also to reach personal goals. We also develop people's talents, which is at the core of growth and, and a good society. We innovate to find sustainable solutions to today's economic, social, and environmental challenges. Thanks to our innovation, we can do that. We contribute to financing our welfare system and to reaching sustainable development goals. A thriving business community will always be essential for Europe to succeed. And Business Europe and its members are committed to living up to their responsibility. We have done this for this these past 60 years, and we want to do even more for the next years. So Business Europe fully share the values which are part of European DNA. Again, values are important. Of course, we talk about social market economy, we talk about competitiveness, but without uh, the values of freedom and democracy, this could never happen. So freedom and democracy are very important. And the freedom of the European single market are essential to optimize the contribution of entrepreneurship to society. You have just seen in the video we projected, between 1915 and 2015, the real average income of the 90% of people at the bottom rose by 150% in Italy, for example, by 250% in France and Germany, compared with only 70% in the US. So our market economy, our values really helps and works also for the people. And Business Europe promotes also business ethics and values. Entrepreneurs have to strive for excellence. This must be a very important thing for business. When there is human activity, mistakes can always happen. But for Business Europe, entrepreneurs should always write the best thing and aim to do the right things for society. Entrepreneurs have to act as reliable and responsible partners, fulfilling all legal obligation and contract commitments towards customer, workers, investors, and suppliers. But they, we have also to go further. We have to have our code of ethics that even go further. These values also guide us also when fulfilling our miss mission as employers and also as business organization. We defend voluntary membership to such organization, as well as their autonomy from political parties. As my friend Enzo Boccia always said, we, are, we do politics, but we are completely independent from parties. So it's, an, it's a different way to, uh, to, to do politics. Our action aim at promoting economic and social progress by strengthening Europe's competitiveness in the interest of society as a whole. So not only for us, but for the society as a whole. We engage in the European social dialogue because we want to real see progress in society, and we do this in good faith. Our position, once agreed, are available to the general public 
transparency is a value for us and transparent about our contact with the European institution and act in accordance with the European Transparent Register, which uh, we always supported from the very beginning. So, dear President Tux, 2017 has been a strong year, as I said before, for the EU economy, with a growth around 2.5% and improvements also in the em employment situation. However, there is still some way to go to be back at the pre-crisis unemployment levels. In particular, in the euro area, we are at 8.7 in December 2017, but we were 7.3 in March 2008. Moreover, the recovery is still boosted by temporary factors such as the ECB monetary su policy support. So further reforms are required, both at national and EU level, to raise long-term growth and ensure that the recovery is long-lasting and sustainable, not only now, but we want a long-lasting and sustainable growth. And for example, we already see business in several countries concerned that shortage of skilled labor may act as a break on future growth. So we have to think about it and, and, and act on it. And if no rapid action is taken, even in countries with high unemployment. So we need to increase the potential growth of our economy, which is estimated to be only around 1.5% in the EU and the Euro area. So you understand well below the current cyclical growth rates. There are many areas where we do need to increase our international competitiveness and where we have seen little progress since the financial crisis. So just to give some example where we, we need to do more. For example, if you look at the EU research and development spending, this remains at 2%, much lower than the 3.3% in Japan or 2.8% in US and China, and so we have to look at that. Second, the EU continues to lag behind its competitors in some key metrics for digital communication, such as the fast fiber connection. Third, the average tax wedge reached 42% in Europe and this is almost one-third higher than in Japan and in the U.S., about 33%. Fourth, we continue to lag behind regarding educational outcomes, and in 2015, the EU's average PISA score was 493, well below the 529 score of pupils in Japan and 524 in Canada or 515, 519 in Korea. Fifth, progress was made in bringing down government deficit, but much more needs to be done to reduce EU public debt levels, as the EU's debt ratio is at 84% of the GDP and is still well above 60% of the Maastricht limit. Sixth, European companies continue to rely much more on banking lending than their competitors. Hence, the need to reinforce and implement the capital market unions is very important. And finally, we've, we need to do further steps for deepening the European Economic and Monetary Union. This is key, uh, and we have to start by a complete full banking union, but also going further. So we talked several times with Donald about this, and we think that this is really the time to make some progress on this point. Ladies and gentlemen, my last remarks will be about trade, industrial policy, and Brexit. Very short. So on trade. Protectionism will not, take Europe, will not make Europe stronger. We must remain open market, but we have to take into consideration what's going on in the US and also what's going on in China. So yes, we have to keep open market, but we don't have to be naive. We have to understand what's going on and we have to act like, you know, as a consequence on that. On industrial strategy, we think uh, it's very important that we have our vision on the industrial strategy. Uh, we have to uh, really work on that. We have to have also an EU governance structure that really make uh, you know, the industrial competitiveness at the core. And in order to show that the EU is serious about strategy you know, industrial policy, of course we need the long-term vision, but we also need the short-term action that are in line with this. And so we think it's very important the decision that we will be taken in the next uh, month about uh, investment in research and innovation in the next multi-annual financial framework that is very important. What we need 
is a substantially increase in the EU budget on research and innovation. EU research and innovation policy is clearly underfinanced. An additional 150 euro billion a year would have to be invested to reach the EU's own 3% 2020 budget. What we, do, we don't want to see is that good research programs are stuck in laboratories and do not find their way to the market. We don't want to see that, that support to industrial-led projects becomes blurry in the FP9. We need clarity and certainty that Europe is committed su to support industrial technologies and incremental research to tackle societal challenges. We hear that the decision on the multi-annual financial framework could be delayed by one year. We cannot afford to lose one year of powerful investment incentives when the US are moving on with a powerful tax reform and China implements the Belt and Road Initiative. So this is very important for us. Last word on, uh, uh, on uh, uh, Brexit. So, Ronald, you will meet the Prime Minister Theresa May this afternoon, exactly at the same time when the EU, EU negotiator, B Michel Barnier, will be here with us to talk to us. We remain extremely concerned with the slow pace of the negotiations. We welcome the positive assessment made by the December European Council on the progress achieved on, on the first phase on issues like citizens' rights, the situation of Ireland, and the financial settlement. But unfortunately, the progress in translating this into legal text is very slow. We hope the discussion on transitional arrangements can go forward now that the UK government has presented a concrete proposal. For Business Europe, ensuring the UK remain in the custom union and in the single market for the duration of the transition period will all appropriate rights and obligations remains the best way to provide certainty and a level playing field. Clarity about the future relation is also key, as companies need time to adjust and prepare themselves. Until the new agreement is in place, a cliff edge cannot be ruled out. Furthermore, the new model that will govern EU-UK future relations should preserve the integrity of the single market. This is very clear to us, based on its four freedoms, and maintain as close economic relation as possible between the EU and the UK. Time pressure is rising. We urge the UK government to engage in the ongoing discussion on transition allowing the process to move forward and to rapidly clarify its intention regarding the future relation. So we are expecting some developments this week and hopefully some clarification regarding the UK position. At the same time, we count on the EU to constructively receive the UK proposal once they are presented. So thank you very much. Uh, Donald, now I leave the floor to you. You, uh, you know you can always count on us. Your leadership for us is very strong. Uh, as I told you, we are absolutely, we want, to, we are committed, we want to work even in the future to have a better Europe uh, on the societal point of view, on the economic point of view. So thank you very much. We are strong uh, from our tradition, but we are even stronger looking forward for our future. Thank you very much.